I recently got back from a four night and a five night Royal Caribbean cruise and both were great, but was it worth it to go on short cruises? Let's talk about it up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. I'm always looking for an excuse to cruise, and in my experience, anytime I can get the green light to book another cruise, I'm all about it. But of course, not all cruises are created equal. Not every single cruise I take is going to be a week-long adventure. And when I go on some of the shorter cruises, I can't help but think, was my time better spent on these cruises versus maybe a longer one? In just the last couple of weeks, I went on a four-night Freedom of the Seas cruise from Miami over to perfect day at Coco Key in the Bahamas, and I also did a five-night cruise on Liberty of the Seas out of Bayonne, New Jersey, down to Bermuda. Now, in the case of both of these cruises, these were shorter sailings, four- and five-nighters, and I went on these cruises instead of maybe a seven-night cruise. And for North Americans especially, seven nights are really that sweet spot for cruising because when you take a week-long cruise, you're going to leave on a weekend, either Saturday or Sunday, and you'll go back on either Saturday or Sunday. And that basically is for most folks who have a day job and want to have a certain amount of PTO involved with it, a good amount of time. That way, if you have two or three weeks of PTO for the entire year, well, then you still have more time to be able to use it for other holidays throughout the season. While three-night cruises that are weekend sailings that begin on a Friday and leave on a Monday, you know, are certainly short, everybody gets that, but because it's over a weekend, the amount of vacation time is limited. But when you go to a four- or a five-night cruise, your sailing is going to begin on probably a weekday, and there's an argument to be made that if you go on, it's a great example, this is with the four-night cruise, leaving on a Monday, coming back on a Friday, would you have been better off with a seven-night cruise because the amount of PTO is pretty much the same, Monday to Friday, well, you're basically taking those five days off of work. And in the case of my five-night cruise, that began on a weekend on a Saturday, actually, but we came back on Thursday, which means basically that you would have had taken almost the entire week off anyway. Admittedly, four- and five-night cruises are definitely marketed differently than a week-long cruise or even a short three-night cruise. While the four- and five-nighters are certainly shorter cruises, they still offer more of an opportunity to quote-unquote get away. I think what really these sailings are meant to do, number one, is maybe to augment the rest of the schedule. Because cruise ships that are doing four- and five-night runs do other kind of sailings. As an example, Liberty of the Seas, which is the ship that offers that five-night cruise to Bermuda, also offers longer sailings, like nine-night cruises over to the Caribbean or even Canada. And when you offer cruises of that length of nine nights, you're going to need to offset it with shorter sailings in order to get it back on some sort of a routine. Royal Caribbean likes to stagger its cruise ship schedule in such a way that basically it repeats the schedule every so often. With three and four night cruises, it's pretty simple. They'll do a four night cruise on a Monday, come back on a Friday, then do a three night cruise that comes back on a Monday and then repeat the schedule ad nauseum. With the five-night cruises, you can sometimes see five and four nights. You can see nine and fives. They kind of mix it up a little bit. But the idea is there's a certain amount of repeatability. The other thing is, of course, not every single person going on any particular cruise is necessarily beholden to PTO time or necessarily concerned with it. There are certainly amount of people that are going to be retirees who have more time than other folks. There are young families who don't have a school schedule to adhere to. And of course, there are just people who are just looking for a vacation in general. And maybe they have a little more flexibility when it comes to the amount of time off they can take. For me, though, I was looking at the itinerary, and is it really worth it to go on these sailings for such a short amount of time? The four-night cruise is probably the one that really makes you think twice about it. Being a four-night sailing, and again, going on a Monday, coming back on a Friday, and the fact that it does the exact same itinerary as a three-night cruise with the added bonus of a sea day, it really makes you think twice about it. For me, what I love about a four-night cruise is while it doesn't seem like it's that big of a difference than a three-night cruise on paper, that extra sea day is really nice to have. When you do a three-night cruise and you're going out of somewhere in Florida, you're going to probably going to go to Perfect Day, Coco Key, in Nassau, Bahamas, but maybe not in that order. The bottom line is there's no sea days, it's a packed cruise, and you're starting from start to finish with plenty to do. And for a lot of folks who do these three-night cruises, they often report back there's just so much condensed into three nights that it can be a little bit overwhelming. In fact, it's the number one reason why I don't recommend as a new cruiser to ever do a three-night cruise because there's just too much happening, there's not enough time to kind of relax and take it easy. And as soon as the cruise begins, it feels like it ends. For me, it feels like after about a day or two, I finally get into cruise mode. You have to kind of adjust into it, right? Mentally, at least maybe that's just me, but I feel that way. And when you do a four-night cruise and you have that sea day on the last day of the sailing, it really makes a difference. It's really nice to have that. And every time I've done a three-night cruise and then done a four-night cruise, I always think to myself, man, I'm so glad I had that extra day there. 
The real difference, though, between a four-night and a seven-night cruise and deciding whether or not you should book a four-night or a seven-night beyond, of course, the price, because the four-nighter is almost certainly going to be cheaper, is the itinerary. When you do a four-night cruise, you're still doing that limited Bahamas run. When you do a seven-night cruise, that opens up so many more opportunities, especially in the Caribbean where you can go down to either Cozumel or you can go over to Puerto Rico or the Virgin Islands. There's more variability in the itineraries offered, and that means more exotic ports you can get to. And while I love the Bahamas, and I really don't mind Perfect Day at Coco Key, it's really nice to get out beyond the Bahamas and see more of the Caribbean. Because after all, I think it's a lot of the beaches and some of the things you can do are far more interesting than what you can find in the Bahamas. Now, I alluded to price before, and depending on the cruise, you can find a lot of variability in that. But generally speaking, I find four-night cruises to be some of the better values out there because three-night cruises, while they are shorter, tend to actually cost more in my experience because, well, everybody can take a weekend cruise. And it's very easy, especially if you live in Florida, to do a weekend cruise in which you, you know, work half day on Friday, hop on board the ship, and then get right off on Monday and only need to have, you know, maybe half a day of PTO. Whereas four-night cruises... I mean, you're taking a couple days off right there. And so there seems to be less demand for that sailing, especially among families. You've got kids in school. Anyway, there is a difference that I can discern between these kinds of sailings. And oftentimes, you can find some really good deals out there. In fact, when I went on this four-night sailing, I was able to redeem one of my casino offers. We've done videos here in the past about how I've been able to get free cruises through Royal Caribbean's Casino for playing in the casino, and there's obviously a gambling risk there, so you should be aware of that. However, that being said, getting a free four-night cruise from Royal Caribbean's Casino Royale loyalty program is pretty much standard. It's so easy to get those because there's just not as much demand for them. Shifting over to Liberty of the Seas and doing a five-night cruise, having that extra, extra day there, again, makes a big difference. We had a sea day followed by two days in Bermuda and then a sea day at the end. And I got to tell you, when we got to that last sea day, it really started to feel like a normal cruise in the sense that it felt long enough that I felt like I really got away and got into cruise mode and it really felt like, you know, I was on board a ship and kind of really disconnected myself and got into that mental state that I really enjoy about going on a cruise. And then, of course, there's the itinerary, which is fantastic. Doing overnight in Bermuda is one of my favorite things to do. And while I've been to Bermuda before, I absolutely fell in love with what Bermuda offered this time much more than before. Maybe it was because we were going in June and the weather was absolutely fantastic. We had such a good time exploring Bermuda and taking in everything that it had to offer. And offering basically 30 hours straight of time in Bermuda was a great way to augment the cruise. Unlike the short cruises that go to the Bahamas, doing a little short run, five-nighters, over to Bermuda felt more like a seven-night cruise than a four-nighter, which feels more like a three-night cruise, if that makes any sense. I think for a lot of people taking these five-night cruises that began on a Saturday, they looked at it as an extended weekend. When your cruise can begin on a Saturday, you get two built-in days off from work, right? So really, you're only taking off Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then Thursday, it maybe you have to take off depending on how far you are from the cruise terminal. I certainly know some friends that were on board the ship that basically commuted back home immediately and were able to get back into work on Thursday. Again, that depends on your schedule, but the bottom line is you can kind of look at it as an extension of the weekend, which is actually one of my favorite tricks to pick a cruise back before I started doing Royal Caribbean Blog full-time. I would look for holidays and weekends that I could extend my trip and use less days off. Whereas a four-night cruise that begins on a Monday and ends on a Friday, there's no variability there unless, of course, there's a holiday there like maybe Labor Day. But when you're talking about these five-night cruises and even maybe six-nighters as well, you get those built-in days off with the weekends, and that can help a little bit make it worthwhile. And for other folks, they're simply looking at it as, Matt, if I take a seven-night cruise, I need five days off. Whereas if I take a five-night cruise, I only need three or four days off. And hey, listen every day, every half a day of PTO counts, and that's worthwhile in the long run. There are a few other considerations you should take into account when picking a shorter cruise versus a longer cruise. Number one, things like the drink package are probably going to cost you more on a short cruise. Royal Caribbean knows that if you're only going on a four or five night cruise, well, then the value proposition of the drink package, especially the deluxe beverage package, is going to be higher than on a longer sailing because basically what happens for most people is there's something called drink fatigue. I made up that term. It's not really a thing. But basically, the longer your cruise is, the harder it is to drink enough every day of your cruise to make it worthwhile. And Royal Caribbean kind of knows this. And so you'll often find higher prices overall per day for a short cruise with the drink package compared to a longer sailing. 
On the flip side, I found actually some of the best prices for Perfect Day at Coco Key on my four-night cruise compared to other settings, including seven-nighters. It was really strange. On Freedom of the Seas, I was seeing prices for things like the Coco Beach Club Cabanas at prices that I had not seen since like 2020. It was really strange to see the Coco Beach Club over the water cabana for $958 and the day pass the Coco Beach Club for $75.99 per guest. Those same items go for literally thousands more for the over the water cabana on other settings I'm booked on. And the Coco Beach Club day pass costs even $100 or $200 more than that. Now, there's variability pricing with Royal Caribbean. We know about this, so this is not new. But this was definitely something I noticed about these four night cruises compared to even three nighters or seven night cruises. So to answer my own question, is a four or five night cruise worth going on? Well, it kind of depends on your priorities. I would say to anybody that you should look at shorter sailings as a way to augment your cruising career rather than as your primary vacation target. What I mean by that is if you're sitting out there and you're looking to book your family vacation, I don't think a three or four night cruise is the one to do that for. I always look at three and four nighters as a way to kind of fit in another cruise. Like you already have like a seven night cruise booked for your family as your vacation, but you're sitting here thinking fondly about a Royal Caribbean cruise. Hey, let's book another cruise to help pass the time, like a way to get closer to our countdown and kind of just, you know, fill in that gap. And that's how I treated this particular sailing on my four nighter on Freedom of the Seas. It wasn't anything I was going to write home about as like the greatest cruise I ever took, but you know what? It was another sailing I was able to take and I enjoyed my time on board. I think the five night cruises work well if you're looking to go on a cruise, but you don't necessarily have the time for a seven nighter. Now, while it doesn't seem like going from four to five really makes a big difference, I really do think once you get that magical five or six nights, it does start to feel more like a traditional sailing. And for that reason, it is worth going on if you're hard pressed for days off from work. Heck, you might combine a cruise and land vacation, which is exactly what I ended up doing. We took our family up to the Northeast, spent some time over in upstate New York, and then did a cruise as well. And to quote Hannah Montana, we got the best of both worlds. So let me know in the comments below, do you think a four and a five night cruise are worth taking? Or do you say you gotta go for a longer sailing to maximize your time off, airfare, and all that? Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on short cruises versus long cruises. While you're down below our video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.